And hello, everyone. Welcome to another Deploy session. My name is Mason Egger, and I'm a senior developer advocate here at DigitalOcean. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to go ahead and drop them in the chat. Uh, also, you can tweet at me. I'm also going to be in the Discord after this presentation. So let's go ahead and get going. Um, today, we're going to talk about scaling. Everything that I've ever thought in my head that I've wanted to tell people about scaling, that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's start off with what is scaling? So at a, at a very high level, scaling is modifying the resource pool of an application to handle certain loads with the most efficiency. And that's a, that's a big key part of it, is handling it with the most efficiency. Um, this can be both the addition or the removal of resources, depending on what is happening with your application. So why is scaling important? Scaling has a lot of benefits, but some of the most important ones are, it keeps your applications available. Um, an application that a customer or a user can't visit is not a good application. You can't, you can't access anything. Um, it reduces the load on your application. You don't want your applications running at a very high stress level or very high CPU level for long periods of time. Um, it just gives, gives you nowhere to go in case something massive happens, like a massive influx of users. Um, it allows you to test your automation. A lot of automation is built around scaling. A lot of automation is built around you know, your testing and all of that. So by having scaling incorporated into these things, you can test the automation that you've built to make sure that things actually behave the way that you want to. Um, and probably one of the biggest reasons and the reasons that most people um, gravitate towards is it can save you money either by not losing money because of an outage or, you know, not spending too much money because you have too many resources allocated when you don't actually need it. So when is a good time for you to scale? When do you decide that, hey, now I need to scale my application? Um, whenever traffic increases or decreases to your application, it's always a pretty decent time to evaluate whether or not you need to scale. Um, also, resource utilization within your cluster uh, crosses a predefined threshold. If you know that your application runs best with you know, at 80% RAM usage or anything above that, it starts to degrade, then if we see it above that, then we definitely want to uh, scale up and deal with that. Um, one of the biggest things about scaling that I can always say is that you have to be proactive with scaling. Reactive scaling leads to outages almost all of the time. Proactive is always going to be better than reactive. Um, if you wait until your app is down, you're going to have an even harder time bringing back up. There are a lot of reasons why this is the case, but one of the biggest ones that I've seen happen over and over again, I, you know, I watch other, I see something go down, like a site that I'm using, I'm like, oh no, that's a scaling problem. Like I can see them <laughs> without even knowing it. Um, and you have to worry about the thundering herd problem, which is basically, okay, my app's down. All these people are trying to access my application or my website. And now I've brought it back up, but oh no, ev like I have one web server came back up and now everybody's funneled into that. And it just becomes this massive mess where all the people that are trying to access your app immediately run into the wall that is your app and then it comes down because you didn't weren't able to come up. So being proactive here instead of reactive always is gonna be the better idea. So uh, how do we determine when we need to scale? Well, metrics, we have to have metrics. So you can say that you wanna scale all you want, but unless you have actual hardcore metrics, logs, uh, usage, CPU, all those things, then you're, it's going to be very difficult for you to scale without any, without any more accuracy than just guessing. So you need to be able to determine what resources your application needs and what happens if you don't have these. And this is a big part is it's the what happens if you don't have them. What happens to your application when you run out of RAM? Does it start dropping requests? Does the whole thing crash? What does it actually do? Um, so you need to figure out like what kind of resources does it need? CPU, RAM, database connections, uh, you know, the amount of like traffic requests that we can take, number of sockets open on, a, on maybe a server or a droplet, something like that. Um, but the thing is, is that to know these limitations, to know when your application may fail and what's going to happen to it, you're going to have to stress test it. You're going to have to do some chaos testing. You're going to have to do some stress testing. You're going to have to try to break your product, um, preferably not in production. It's never good to test in production um, because if you don't test and find these limits, then your users will, and then that leads to an outage. So it's best for you just to do the work above, above hand and just do the stress testing yourself. Um, when you see the limits approaching scale, like don't, if your limit is 85% CPU, don't scale at 84% CPU. By the time those, those resources come up, you could pass that threshold. Thresholds, it's been my observation that whenever you don't want a threshold to be crossed, it crosses it super quickly. 
Um, like it doesn't slowly gradually go from 81, 82, 83, sits there for a little while, 84, 85. Oh no, we need to scale. It's usually 81, 82, 90. And it just does this because that's, you know, that's the best way for it to hurt you. So that's what it does. Um, so while you know where your limit is, but I would probably set it lower. That's just been my experience. Know your upper and lower bounds. Um, if And knowing your lower bounds is really, really valuable because do you need six servers with 48 CPUs in them each for your little application? Maybe you do once a year. Maybe you do on, say, like maybe Black Friday or something when everyone's coming in and buying everything, but you probably don't need that on April the 23rd. So don't do that because that's just a waste of money and a waste of resources. Scale appropriately when you need it. Uh, monitor your logs for errors in the web server. Um, timeouts are a big red flag when something is wrong. So when you start seeing, like there's all sorts of metrics you can use, but like web server errors are a big one. It's a big one that I've used in my career. Um, when you start seeing things time out, uh, then you know something's up. Um, and sometimes scaling helps you mitigate issues. So yeah, there might be something wrong with an application, but maybe scaling up will buy you some time instead of an outage and you might end up doing that. Now, the other thing you need to do is you need to be prepared to scale for one-off events. So you need to be proactive in approaching that are scaling with large events are coming on the horizon for your company or for your app that can save you from an outage. So something that you know is gonna happen. Black Friday is going to happen. Um, here's an example that I may have experienced in my career. Say your company is sponsoring a very large event, a very large sporting event. For this case, we'll say the Super Bowl. Um, and at 18.39 in the evening, your ad is going to play it's very likely that you're going to get a large amount of traffic uh, to your app at the time your ad plays. That's just, that's the whole purpose of ads. You'll probably get a good amount before, but you're likely at the time that ad airs, your homepage is probably going to ex receive a large amount of traffic. So if you wait to scale and you wait to auto scale until that exact moment, you're probably going to face downtime because the app's gonna be underwater you know that there's a large amount of traffic coming preemptively scale up. If you are say a streaming service and you are streaming a, uh, a sports event that is going to be very well watched. I would not wait until the more, I would not wait until 10 minutes before to scale my cluster. I would scale that cluster up probably, you know, hours before, maybe even not the day before, just to be prepared for when it's coming. Yes, it probably will cost you a little bit more preemptively scaling a little bit, um, but it's better than an outage. Remember, in, in, in my mind, all things are better than an outage. So you definitely want to do that. You know your traffic is coming, prepare. So how do you scale? What are the ways that we can scale? Um, well, you can, there's actually two main ways we can do it. You can either add or remove resources to an existing worker pool. So this means adding more CPUs, adding more RAM, um, or you can also, uh, you know, add more workers to it. So instead of, instead of having three servers running my website, now I have five servers running my website. Um, and this can be done either manually or through automation. Typically it's best to do it through automation. De just depends on your size. Just remember that once you have automation, like I love automation, I'm the biggest fan of automation, but more code equals more potential for bugs. So, but at the same time, do you wanna be waking up at three o'clock in the morning to scale your web server? Eh, I didn't, that's why I automated it in my last job. Um, so those two different types of scaling actually have different names. So the first one we're gonna talk about is horizontal scaling which is adding more workers to a pool to distribute the load. So this is adding more droplets behind a load balancer, adding more pods in a Kubernetes cluster, adding more app deployments inside of app platform. These are adding all adding more workers to do the work um, and just make sure that you have the ability to handle it. So let's take this to like a visual metaphor. So let's do horizontal scaling at a visual metaphor. Um, so say you have a restaurant kitchen that's serving food. Okay. It serves one thing. It has one entree and two sides. Um, one worker here would be overwhelmed because they'd have to run over here, prepare the entree, run over here, prepare the side, run over here, prepare the side. So that is an under, under scaled kitchen. Um, three workers may be ideal. This worker prepares the entree. This worker prepares side two. This worker prepares side three. Um, but maybe six workers is necessary. Maybe you need someone prepping the food before. The, and then there's a cook and a prep for each station. Maybe you need another one for plating. Maybe you need seven. And then like a wait staff for delivery. You need a certain amount. But one so where that number lies, you have to determine. But one thing we can probably figure out is if we have a thousand cooks in the kitchen, it's probably going to be awful. So the point of this metaphor is, is that it's about finding the sweet spot. You can have too few, which is one server and one person cooking, or you can have a thousand and then nobody can move and nothing happens. 
Um, when you're in that middle sweet spot, the difference between three workers and six workers, uh, you have to see. You'll have to test and see what the efficiency is. Um, but when you're on the bookends, on the way too low or way too many, it's kind of blatantly obvious. Um, and then when one worker clocks out, another takes their place. This is a metaphor for, say, one of the servers going down or one of the Kubernetes pods going down, and then it automatically being brought back up. If one of them clocks out, it's time to go. Um, so and the, the other type of scaling that we have, that was horizontal scaling. Now we have vertical scaling. So vertical scaling is adding more resources to an already existing pool of workers. And this is specifically to the drop, to the VMs or the thing. This is giving it more um, more power. So adding more CPUs, more RAM, more GPUs. Maybe it needs more network interfaces. Maybe it needs more storage because it needs, it has like a large on disk cache. Who knows? But it's definitely about adding more resources to it. And then a, uh, a visual metaphor for this would be, I would say a moving company. So maybe you have a moving company that works on moving boxes. Um, the box is so heavy that it takes two people to load all the time. Um, and that's, you know, that's just more people. And yes, it works. It works. But wouldn't it just be more efficient if we just, instead of doubling the amount of workers we need and now we have to pay, let's go just hire someone who's a little bit stronger and pay them a little bit more. So instead, let's go hire some power lifters to move it. You know, let's not hire, you know, kindergartners. Kindergartners probably make for terrible movers. They're enthusiastic, but I don't think their upper body strength will help for it. So hire some power lifters. Um, the too weak of the worker, the job doesn't get done. Too strong of the worker, though, on the other hand, the potential is wasted. And this is a great metaphor for, like, if you're using a server and you maybe you're running a Java application and it needs four gigs of RAM and you only gave it two and it's struggling, or you only gave it four and you have no leeway, but it makes, doesn't make that much sense to give it 48 or 64 gigs of RAM because there's so much extra and you're going to be paying so much more for that. So... Scaling vertically is about adding resources that you need, more CPU, more RAM and stuff, but also adding it smartly and only adding the things that you need to it. So which should you use? When should you choose between horizontal and vertical scaling? Um, that's something that you have to determine, but I do have a couple of suggestions. Um, every situation is different. There is no magic paintbrush and I go vertical scaling. It doesn't work like that. You have to figure it out for yourself. But here's a couple suggestions. Um, horizontal scaling, having more workers, tends to work when your CPU and your resources aren't being overtaxed um, because the work they're trying to do is too hard, but they're being overtaxed because they're handling too many requests. There's too many in incoming socket connections. So then I mean, you can run out of sockets on a, on a on a server. So or ports ports on a socket connection. So what you need to be able to do is when you're handling a very large number of requests. Um, it's a good idea to horizontally scale so you can distribute the load across more evenly. Vertical scaling, on the other hand, this is what happens when your application just requires more resources. I'm running a Ruby on Rails app and it needs four gigs of RAM and I've given it two. It's like, it's clonking along, but it's not working. Let's give it a little bit more. And oh, maybe it would work a little bit better if I gave it eight. Um, another reason you would vertically scale is you maybe you're hosting your own container orchestrator. Maybe you're hosting Kubernetes and you want to be able to host more nodes, well, you could, this is actually an example where you could horizontally scale, but you could also vertically scale, which we're gonna go over here in a couple of examples. So here's, a, here's an example of some scenarios and what I would do in this scaling instance. Um, our website went viral and now there's a hundred times more traffic. Um, I would probably horizontally scale. Your web servers are overloaded. You're probably gonna run out of ports and socket connections if it's going like massively viral. Um, and more, add more, and then let your load balancer handle the new routes and the new sites. It's easy to add them up underneath it. So I add up a droplet and it gets added to the load balancer and it just goes. That's, that's how I would handle the situation personally. Because even if you add more CPU and more resources, depending on those type of socket connections, there's still going to only be so many sockets and so many ports that can be opened on it unless you go and manually tweak the kernel, but that's, that's down the road. Um, you're probably just going to do better off with, you know, more at that point. Um, the latest version of Django of my Django app needs 25% more RAM because of something that I've done. Like we've added some feature and now it needs more RAM. This is a perfect example of vertical scaling. Each app requires more resources locally. So give it to them, scale that server up and go from a to maybe two, two gig, two CPU to four CPU, four gig or something like that. Um, our 10 node Kubernetes cluster needs a thousand more pods. Now this is an action example where we could do both. We could horizontally scale. We could add 10 more 16 core machines that would 
maybe handle it depends on how many cpus the pods need um we could add 16 more cores to my core my current fleet um so whatever fleet we need, uh, we could add more. We could make those bigger. Um, we could also do both. We could change our default node type to the larger CPU and then add more workers, which would then you know expand our thing. Things would get our cluster. Our apps would probably get scheduled onto it to load balance it out. And then we could remove some of the smaller nodes. So that way we always know they're getting added to the bigger nodes. As you can see, both answers are kind of right here. It just depends on what you want to do and what best fits your situation. Um, one of the big things that a lot of people tend to always seem to forget is that scaling doesn't always mean up. Um, more resources means more money. Knowing your minimal resource required resources allow you to run allows you to run with the minimal amount of resources. So if you're constantly scaling up and you're never scaling down, you're if, unless you're constantly dealing with that traffic, that amount of traffic, which is unlikely, um, you're wasting money and you're wasting resources. Uh, when you no longer need resources, delete them and scaling down. Scaling down in and of itself can bring its own set of issues. Um, and this is where you're gonna have to test because what happens if you only have one copy of your app running and you scale down and you and in your Kubernetes pod, so you have one, you only have one replica and you delete the node that's running that that pod. Well, yes, it's going to get rescheduled, but there will be downtime because of that scale down event. So you have to make this is where redundancy becomes a requirement inside of your. Uh, Kubernetes inside of all of your things. So scaling down sounds easy, but it does have its own challenges and you have to be wary of it. The biggest thing you have to worry about with scaling down is, you know, making sure you don't scale down too fast and actually accidentally delete an entire deployment. Um, the best way to deal with this is redundancy or to scale down one node at a time. So now that we've talked about scaling, how can we scale using some of DigitalOcean's products, more specifically App Platform? So App Platform allows for easy horizontal and vertical scaling. Um, static sites don't need to be scaled on App Platform as they are already distributed through DigitalOcean's content delivery network. So they're already distributed as far as they can go. And static sites typically don't use a lot of web server space or anything. So there's not really a lot of scaling that can be done with it. You can't even scale them um, on the DigitalOcean website. Managed databases uh, are scalable from the DigitalOcean dashboard. So you can figure out how many replicas and stuff you want from there. But in App Platform, workers and services are scaled from within the App Platform dashboard. Uh, so app platform vertical scaling, this is how you would do it. Um, app platform makes it easy to vertically scale your app because you can just come here and select which, uh, which plan you want. So as you can see, there's like one gig, one Ram, two gig, one CPU, four gig, one CPU, all that as you go up. And this allows you to vertically scale. Um, you select the resource requirements and your app will deploy with those resources. Uh, this is available. Vertical scaling is available in both basic and the professional app platform plans. Uh, app platform also allows for horizontal scaling. So horizontal scaling is where you add number of containers, as you can see to the right of that size thing, you can now choose your number of containers. Um, this allows you to select how many of these that you want. So now instead of just having one app platform deployment with one gig and one CPU, I can now have four app platform deployments and they will all be load balanced too. And everything, if one of them goes down, it's gonna keep the others up. Um, and this is available only with the professional plan. And... That is all I have on the scaling side of things for App Platform. I am going to look over, I see I have a question in chat that I'm gonna go ahead and answer real quick. Um, but yes, so the question was, does vertical scaling imply some downtime for scaled instances or do we use new instances with higher or lower configurations? Great question. So on App Platform, uh, vertical scaling does not imply downtime because on App Platform, um, scaling only happens when like your app, will, it will scale up, it'll start a new one and you, your, the traffic is only migrated across to the new more, more resourced app once it's come up successfully and it's responding to health checks. However, if you are doing this on your own and you have maybe droplets or stuff, yes, this does imply downtime. If, you were, if I had one droplet and I wanted to add resources to it, I have to turn off the droplet and add resources and turn it back on. Um, personally, if I ever needed to scale up vertically, um, then I would probably deploy the application with the new, um, with a new set, with a new droplet with more resources, wait till that one is up, and then I would tear the other one down. That's how I would do it personally. Um, that's the best way to avoid outages. So that seems to be all the questions in chat. Thank you very much for attending my talk. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of Deploy, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.